So, egg on my face, I thought I had five Fridays in December, but it seems I was one day off, so. So we're already starting 2021 with having to deal with what should have been done in December. But par from the course, am I right? But I can't be too mad as I won't need long to cover Diary, and we can get straight into the review of Id Invaded. Diary of our days at Breakwater is about Hina, who gets strong-armed into joining the Breakwater Club, which is just a fishing club. Each episode is about her learning a new thing about fishing based on whatever the club decides to catch. This is bog-standard gals being pals, slice of life, there's no real stakes or overreaching plot. The biggest thing that will determine whether or not you should watch this is how much you are into fishing as a hobby. I am not into fishing, so I found this series a bit boring. We also don't really swap focus off Hina as a character to tackle an anything outside of fishing, and that's a shame, as you can give more reasons to watch the series by giving the other girls complimentary arcs to Hina's. But there's not much else to say other than it's fine. I know several of his jokes didn't really land on me, but I'm one of those SJWs ruining anime by not finding the joke that the arts and craft club is filled with guys all that funny. Won't someone please think about the anime fans? Watch this if you like to fish, or want to learn how to cook and prepare seafood, but otherwise a bit of a bore. But let's get to the main dish of this review, Id Invaded, which when I previously mentioned it, I mispronounced it as ID Invaded, as in the process of stealing your license, when in fact it's about invading the Id of the mind, as in the fruiting and layout of the mind. But whose id are we invading, and for what purpose? Well, it's serial killers, and the purpose is to use the world that those ids form to reveal the details of their identity and background. But not anybody can enter the mind of the killer. It takes a killer to enter the mind of the killer. So the detectives must employ some of the less unsavory sorts, thus framing the series around the question of the greater good, and whether at the end of the day, if the result makes up for the method. This question revolves around two mental detectives. First, Akihito Narahisago, a former detective who lost everything once a serial killer killed his daughter, and that led to his wife committing suicide out of grief. And thus, he took justice into his own hand and gunned the guy down. The other being Koharu Honomachi, a young detective who, after a on-the-job injury to the head and brain, has started to form dangerous habits on the job, showing less and less value of the human life. These two must enter the mind of the serial killers to not only stop them, but to track down a mysterious figure who is also entering the mind of these killers with the express purpose of turning them into serial killers, because of course. So going to the halfway point, we did do a lot of the things I'm looking for. We've established a strong threat that may require such a method. We had a decent character to work around, as Akihito is sympathetic, but has an established air of danger around him, as, as he has a propensity of convincing the killers he's locked up with to commit suicide, thus taking justice into his own hand. Hanamachi has been made aware that she's turning into a monster. All we need now is the reveal of how all of this works, the idea of the mastermind, and to tie up all these loose ends. However, they really trip up at this point. They establish a system that's based around a girl whose dreams act as a portal to her id, allowing it to be shared and accessed with other people. But it links the deepest to serial killers, who kill her in her dream at every point they can. While this is a bit magical, it isn't too hard of a pill to swallow, as we're already tracking people down off their desire to kill, and we have machines that let people access the dream world, so I can work with it. The villain, however, is complete garbage, and spoiler, is the chief of the force. But his methods are just such a mixed bag. He kidnaps the girl and connects her to the machine, and that lets people enter this dream world. For what I assume is the purpose of stopping killers, then why is he making them? Is it to create killers to prove that the system works and get funding? But the force seems to have no budget issues. Is it because his god complex is so strong that he wants to create killers so he can be like a god? But that feels kind of weak. Maybe I'm missing something, but whatever the reason might be, it won't add anything to his character. He's a villain for villain's sake. Therefore, our heroes to overcome, but he has no personality besides his god complex and, and how he will boast that he's so much better than you. For Akaru the Dream Girl, there's a stronger question about the greater good, as there's the question of whether they should honor her request to Mercy kill her, to spare her the pain of being repeatedly killed in her dreams, or whether to keep her alive so they can stop the serial killers. And if the series had a more open ending on if the protagonists were in the right, this could make up for the boring big bad. But it's more like, don't worry, we'll figure something out to end your pain. Now get in the machine so we can go back to work. Otherwise, the series looks alright. It has some alright music and really excels in the visuals, as I really like a lot of the different designs the series does for the different worlds the detectives go into. I think it does help make up for some of the issues in the back half, but it can only distract with how much the series loses the thread. Hanamachi is just like, yeah, this is my life now. I don't need to question the process or whether I'm fine with becoming a monster for the greater good. Also, why does she look like a kid? It's fine that Akihito made all those people commit suicide. He's now at peace with the loss of his loved ones. Now let's go see those new worlds. No need to question whether we should keep this portal open, even though it's at the risk of being abused. Maybe you'll be fine with just going over these questions in your head, but I would have preferred if they brought it up in the canon. But Hey, if you can shut off your brain and do your best at missing the point, maybe you can enjoy the whole spectacle of the thing, but that second half really took me out of it and left a sour taste in my mouth, as the series could have been so much more. 